what is a prisoner's dilemma in game theory? And this is the absolute most classic game in game theory, not because it's a cool scenario, even though the scenario is kind of cool and interesting, but rather this is representative of a problem we see a lot of times all over the world. In other words, the whole jail prison scenario is designed to help us to think about the scenario, but it really helps us think about situations where people should be cooperating, where everybody would be better off if they cooperated, but in fact, they don't cooperate. And I'll, I'll go over some of those scenarios in a minute, but first let's actually just get the classic setup and the traits of this game theory matrix. So the classic setup is you have two prisoners who have been caught for a crime and the police have enough evidence to convict them of a minor crime, but the police are pretty sure that these two people committed a major crime and they did. Um, but they don't have evidence of that unless one of them will rat on the other. So they set up this incentive system where the two prisoners are in separate rooms and they tell both prisoners. If you give us evidence against your friend, then we will give you a lighter charge. So cooperating is going to be not snitching on your friend, and defecting is going to be snitching on your friend. If neither player snitches, then they both get the one year in prison that the police can convict them of based on the minor crime they, they have evidence for. If one player gives evidence against their friend and the other cooperates and doesn't say anything, then the person who gave the evidence against their friend, they get off scot-free. And the other player, the one who stayed quiet, they go to jail for three years. Um, and the reverse is true up here. If, uh, if the red player is quiet and the blue player snitches, the blue player gets off and the red player has three years in prison. If they both give evidence against one another, then they both get two years in prison because, of course, the police have evidence against both of them. If you solve this for Nash equilibrium, what you get is that both players are going to snitch. However, you look at that scenario and you say, wait a second, both players would be better off if they both cooperated. So why didn't they just both cooperate? Like, why can't we just move from the defect, defect scenario up here? And the reason is, if you end up up here and you are both cooperating, both players have an incentive to defect. And once one defects, it sort of collapses towards this defect-defect equilibrium. And so that's, that's the basic setup for the prisoner's dilemma. Now there's going to be two features of a prisoner's dilemma that you can pull out of this. One is that both players have a dominant strategy to defect. And I'll define dominant strategy in a second. What is a dominant strategy? A dominant strategy is when you check every single one of the other player's possible strategies and you ask yourself, what's my best response? Dominant strategy is when that best response is always the same thing. So here, the red player can say, if the other player stays quiet, what's my best strategy? Is it to stay quiet or to snitch? Well, it's to snitch. And then they do the same exercise. What if the other player snitches? What's my best strategy? Is it to stay quiet or to snitch? And it's to snitch. So no matter what the other player does, if your best response to that is one particular thing, in this case to defect, that's a dominant strategy. And a shorter way of saying that is a dominant strategy is a strategy that is always a best response. or always a best response to each of the other player's possible strategies. That's a dominant strategy. And then the second trait of a prisoner's dilemma is that both players are better off in the cooperate, cooperate scenario, or in the scenario where both are playing their dominated strategy, where dominated strategy is a strategy that's never a best response. The way I put that here is that both players prefer the cooperate cooperate box over the Nash equilibrium. And of course, the big outcome here is that it's really, really hard to sustain cooperation because the players have an incentive to defect, which will generally lead to a collapse toward the defect defect Nash equilibrium. That's the setup. Now, if we want to apply this scenario more broadly, 
We can start to brainstorm scenarios where people should cooperate, you would want them to cooperate, but, but in reality they're not cooperating. And there's actually a bunch of different uh, classic game theories that could match that scenario. Um, but one of the possibilities is that it represents a prisoner's dilemma. And actually, tragedy of the commons and public goods games can fall into the prisoner's dilemma category. Now, it's not the only category that can represent those two things. But if you imagine like a classic tragedy of the commons scenario, where you have uh, a fishery with a bunch of fishers overfishing out of the lake, the cooperate strategy is to not overfish so that the fish population replenishes the next year. And the defect strategy is going to be to overfish so that you have more of the fish for yourself that particular year. And if you think about it, if everybody else is only fishing just enough, it's in your best interest to defect and overfish. If everybody else is overfishing, it's in your best interest to also overfish so you don't lose out on the rapidly depleting resource of fish. So that's a scenario that matches really well. Public goods um, match really well. Like let's say you have a neighborhood and the neighborhood would benefit from having a crime watch where everybody puts in their, you know, their two hours a week watching out of crime. Um, it would be best if everyone could cooperate and participate equally, you know, pay the time tax of putting in their two hours a week. But if everyone else is putting in their two hours and you just come up with an excuse to not show up to your shift, um, you benefit, but you still get the safety benefit from everybody else doing that. But of course, if everybody else sees that you're doing that, they're going to defect themselves and make excuses not to show up themselves. And we end up in this scenario where everybody has an excuse not to show up to their shift of the crime watch even though everybody would be better off if everyone put in their two hours a week. So when you start to look for it, you just start to see prisoner's dilemmas everywhere. And this is especially important if you're a problem solver who's trying to design systems that structure incentives for people to cooperate. Because of course, as a system designer, you're asking the question, how could I change the payoffs in this table to get people to cooperate? Because that's better for everyone if I can do that. So understanding this dynamic, super, super essential for economists, for system designers, for biologists. This is the most important game to learn if you're learning game theory.